Yes, Beth is in the house. Good morning. Oh, there we go. It's good to be here as we worship in spirit and truth here at Glenside United Church of Christ. I'm Pastor Kim Kendrick. I proudly serve as an interim pastor at Glenside United Church of Christ, again, where we worship in spirit and in truth. As we are about to begin our worship experience with our prelude, Many and Great, with our phenomenal handbell choir. Again, our prelude, Many and Great. <laughs> I got to, um, oh, am I still? Amen. And indeed, many and great are the gifts that are just manifested in this moment, are shared with us by our great and good creator, and are shared with us by our amazing and talented congregation. Thanks so much to our bell choir. And what a beautiful combination of our bells and percussion, right? Amen. Can we get a round of applause for that? Amen. 
So I'm delighted to be with all of you this morning. I say welcome and hello to my friends on Zoom. And yes, this is me, Anne Therese Ortiz, your associate pastor here on the big screen in the, in the congregation and here on the little screen for those of us who are on Zoom. I wanna welcome all of you today to Glenside United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And that is you and you and you. And what I'd like to invite all of us to do this morning is just to take a moment. If you're in the congregation in the church right now, I'd invite you to rise as you are able to look around, to wave at one another, to say welcome, to say hello. And if you're here in the world of Zoom, to do the same thing. Let's wave at one another in the Zoom boxes so everybody here indeed knows that we are welcome. Let's do the wave, let's say hello. Remember, this is a place where everybody is welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And as we finish our waves of welcome, we move now into our opening prayer. God's reach is endless. God's grace is lavish. God's wisdom is vast. God's presence is here. Breathe easy, breathe deeply. Let us worship the one who welcomes us home. Loving, loving parent who is with a teenager, you know what it's like to wait up for your child. I know what it's like to wait up for a child who doesn't meet curfew. They'll tell you as you're standing at the door with the porch light on, no one can sleep until that child is safely at home. Friends, I think God is like that for all of us. The porch light is on. The door is unlocked. We might be late for curfew, but God is just so glad that we're home. So let us pray the prayer of confession together, trusting that no matter what we do or what we leave undone, the porch light is always on. Let us pray together. The next slide we're doing together, please. As well as, I believe it's in your bulletin. All right, together. The prodigal son. Family of faith, the word prodigal can be defined as wasteful or imprudent, hence the name prodigal son. However, prodigal can also be described as extravagant and excessive. Friends, we worship a prodigal God, a God who is extravagant in mercy and excessive in grace. For no matter how many times we run, no matter how far we go or how lost we get, God is standing at the end of the driveway, waiting for each and every one of us. The doors are open. The feast is for you. The feast is for each and every one of us. The grace is extravagant. Now, my friends, may I invite you to rise as you are able for the reading of our gospel text. Today's gospel comes to us from the gospel of Luke. All the tax collectors and sinners were sitting 
were gathering around Jesus to listen to him. The Pharisees and legal experts were grumbling, saying, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Jesus then told them this parable. Jesus said, a certain man had two sons. The younger son said to his father, father, give me my share of the inheritance. Then the father divided his estate between them. Soon afterward, the younger son gathered everything together and took a, tri a trip to a land far away. There, he wasted his wealth through extravagant living. When he had used up his resources, a severe food sort shortage rose in the country and he began to be in need. He hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. He longed to eat his fill from what the pigs ate, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have more than enough food, but I'm starving to death. I will get up and go to my father and say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Take me on as one of your hired hands. So he got up and went to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion. His father ran to him, hugged him, and kissed him. Then his son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quickly bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Fetch the fattened calf and slaughter it. We must celebrate with feasting because this son of mine was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now, his older son was in the field. And coming in from the field, he approached the house and heard music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what was going on. The servant replied, your brother has arrived and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he received his son back safe and sound. Then the older son was furious and didn't want to enter in, but his father came out and begged him. He answered his father, look, I've served you all these years and I never disobeyed your instruction. Yet you've never given me as much as a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours returned, after gobbling up your estate on prostitutes, you slaughtered the fattened calf for him. <coughs> then his father said, son, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. My friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There we go. Sorry, there's a little bit of setup this morning. Hi, I'm Laura Brown and I'm the director of Christian education here at Glenside UCC. So I have props today uh, because I wanna set a 
I'm going to show you guys this, you know, like when you watch movies and they show reenactments of what happened, I'm going to show you my story with some props. So I'm going to try to have enough room and not let anything fall and keep the microphone up. Might do some juggling. Okay. Yep, one more. Okay. So do any of you kids, young people or young at heart, do you go to the library ever? Yeah, yeah, I saw some hands. Courtney raised her hand, Ben raised his hand. So you go to the library. Sometimes it's built into your school week, right? You get to go one day of the week or if you have spare time during the week, you get to go to the library. I love the library. I brought my library card. I've had this since I was probably in like fifth or sixth grade. I've lived between Berks and Montgomery County most of my life outside of college. So I've had it that long. It kind of has a sticker, a little round sticker saying I can go to a Montgomery County Library or a Berks County Library. So I feel pretty lucky to have this. So the library is a special place for me. So this past week, I decided to go to the library, get a book out like I do. And I brought not my library book because you'll hear the story, but here's a book. We're gonna pretend this is the book I got out. So I got a library book out and I, you know, the library entrusts you with this book. You get to take it home. You're going to take care of it and you're going to enjoy it. Well, so I take my book home. Um, you know, I have stuff going on in the morning. I set it on my desk. Okay. So next question. Does anybody here have a pet cat or have had a pet cat in your life? Yes, yes, so, so I see some hands, good. So I also brought another illustration. Here's my son, Caleb, and my cat, Larry. Larry is a, a fluffy, we don't say he's, he's, he's fluffy. He's fluffy, yeah. Fluffy yellow cat, kind of like Garfield. Likes to lay around, likes to eat, super cuddly, healthy. He's very healthy, but Larry sometimes thinks that he's a little more agile and graceful than he is. You know, he like, likes to jump up on the shelves and in the meantime, things get knocked down. So I have this library book sitting on my desk. Larry, when I'm not home, I'm assuming this is what's happening because I found proof. So Larry goes, I get home, my book had been open. He, I get home, I see there are like footprints across my book and I can tell he must've been digging in a house plant. There's dirt in my book. Then I see, you know how cats do that pat, 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 glass falls? So my book is wet. So I'm thinking I have to take this library book back to the library. So I get a, a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. And here's my, sorry, sorry for the rumbling, my hair dryer. I'm trying to dry the pages. I'm trying to clean out the pages of my book. Um, but of course, when I get done, it doesn't look as good as it did when I got it out of the library, right? There's no way I can make this book look as fresh and crisp as it did when I got it from the library. So I already told you, I love the library. So the last thing I wanna do is upset the librarian. So, you know, I walk into the library, my face is sagging, I'm embarrassed. And I say to the librarian, here I'm returning this book. As you can see, it's not the way that it came home to me. And I'm so sorry. And I think this librarian is probably gonna take my, my beloved library card I've had since I was like 10 years old. She's gonna cut it up. She's gonna say, you better increase your book budget because you're gonna have to start buying your own books. Um, but instead I get to the library and I show her and she smiles and she laughs at me. And she has other crazy book stories about things that have happened to library books. And she welcomes me back in the library and she says, I'm just so happy that you as a member of the community, you're here with us and you're using the library and you're using our services and you love books. And that made me think about today's gospel message because what we have is this brother and he goes and he takes his inheritance and he goes out and he's, he's kind of wasteful. You know, he uses his inheritance in a way that maybe isn't responsible. And then he's feeding pigs. And I also want to add, I, they make this feeding pigs thing out like it's the worst thing ever. I grew up, my grandparents are pig farmers. And I was like, what's so wrong about feeding pigs? <laughs> but, you know, besides the point, he gets to the point where he has to eat the pig food. And I think that's maybe where things go south. So <laughs> he decides he's going to go home 
But the father, like that librarian that so graciously welcomed me back into the library, said, you know what, you are, you are welcome here always. The father opens his arm and he throws the biggest party for his son because he is so glad that the son's home. And just like how God, regardless of how many library books we mess up or how many people that were rude to at the grocery store, although we should try not to, or however far we stray from God, God is always there to welcome us, welcome us home, to embrace us and be with us and show us that grace in our day-to-day -day life. Will you pray with me? God of grace, you are so glad and we are so glad you love us and hug us and welcome us home no matter what. Help us to always return to you. Amen. have been listening to Full to the Brim uh, for weeks now as our thematic song for our Lenten season. And this week we were treated to the flute. TJ, thank you so much. Can we give it up for TJ Cash, please? Amen and amen, Full to the Brim. Yes, and our bells. Miss Laura, thank you so much for that wonderful message. Amen and amen, amen and amen. Let me get myself together this morning. Yes, indeed.
Yes, indeed. So good to see you, family. So good to see you. So many of your juicy faces in the sanctuary as well as online, wherever you find sanctuary, wherever God is, is sanctuary. Amen. Wherever divine is, is sanctuary. Amen. 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 Will you join me in prayer? Will you join me in prayer? Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on all of us. Gracious and loving God, thank you. Thank you for all that has been seen and said, pronounced and proclaimed, heard and heartfelt. As we approach this preaching time, settle our hearts right now, God, settle our minds. We thank you for this privilege of your presence on this platform. Open our eyes that we might see, open our ears that we might hear, open our hearts that we might receive what you say to us today. I thank you for this holy assignment in this sacred space. Please be with me, your servant, as I humbly take on this task. Allow this to be all about you and nothing about me. I pray this prayer in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. Today, the Pharisees, they back at it. These Pharisees are back at it, criticizing Jesus. They just won't let up. Gene, what the what? With the critique of Jesus, once again, they're upset and they're angry. They're angry that not only Jesus welcomes the sinners, but here's Jesus. He's got the audacity to sit down and share a meal. Imagine that eating with sinners, that Jesus, always doing some DoorDash with folks, that Jesus, my, my, look at that, sitting down at a table eating with folks, how dare he do this, and as always, when Jesus gets some questions, Jesus is able to read the hearts and minds of the people, specifically these Pharisees. And however, Jesus decides to respond to their unspoken questions, their unspoken things, their unspoken critiques and criticisms. And he does it in a roundabout way that I've said often, Barbara, I've, I've said that it, it gets on my nerves. I don't know about you. Why can't Jesus just give a yes or a no? Come on, dude. Why can't you just give a yes or no answer? We get a parable. Dun, 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 dun. We get a parable. And today's parable is a familiar one, right? I'm sure a lot of you have heard this before. It's the prodigal son parable. This is the gospel passage that a lot of us are very familiar with. We know the father in the story, and the father in this story has two sons. The youngest son comes and he asks the father for his inheritance, not, not just some payday loan, mm -mm. not just an, a, a, an advance on his allowance. He wants it all. Dad, write that check. Everything. He says, give it to me all. Not tomorrow, not in two weeks when you get paid, not on the 30th, not, not uh, the first of the year, now. The youngest son, he makes this request. And the father, the father agrees. The father agreed to this request and he divides up the money because the father has two sons, remember? The second son also gets his fair share. This youngest son that asks for his inheritance, he takes it and he leaves. He takes his inheritance and he leaves. 
And just as he leaves, he has wanderlust. And he goes off and he goes off into the world, Lauren. And as he goes off, he has these wanderings and he spends his entire allowance and he doesn't go far. And it's not like he jets off to Vegas. He doesn't go far. It's not that far. He's, he's, he's like not even in Atlantic City. He's like right up the turnpike at that new casino. I don't know anything about that. Father has two sons. The oldest son is extremely responsible, extremely responsible, very obedient. He listens to his father. The oldest son manages the estate. He's a good steward of all of the resources that the family has been given. The oldest son is in charge. He knows and has a relationship with all the servants that the family has. The eldest son is faithful to the father and is right there on the scene with all of his duties. And as the youngest son goes off to squander his inheritance, we can sense that there's some tension. However, after the money has run out, after the money has become funny and the change has become strange, there's a period of time where the son decides that he's got to do something different, the youngest son. And as Ms. Laura alluded to, he's got to come back. He's got to tend to the swine. He's got to come back to the farm that he's used to, that he grew up on. He actually had to tend to the swine for a period of time as he had no real skills. His life consisted of drudgery and hard and dirty work as he cared for another farmer's swine. Have you ever had to swallow your pride? Hello, walls. Hello, ceiling. I, I, I'm not just talking to me. I'm, I mean, somebody put it in the chat. I'm, uh, hello. I see some eyes I, over your mask. Have you ever had to swallow your pride? I often tell people that I ran away from home. But my running away from home wasn't like 11. It wasn't like, you know, Ben's age, or it wasn't like, I ran away from home when I was like 19. <laughs> Legally an adult, right? Still stupid. I went to live with my grandmother. And as I lived with my grandmother, I spent about a year. But I did lots and lots of foolish things during that time. Not like I stopped doing foolish things, but I did a lot of foolish things during that 19 to 20, 21 year time when I lived with my grandmother in South Philly in the Point Breeze section. And I remember as I was in my addiction during that time to drugs, I started getting clean and I started getting this job and it was my first jobs that I was doing very well after a while. And I started making a little bit of money and I finally got my first apartment right up at Stenton and Vernon Road. And so I decided that I was gonna move out of South Philly and leave my grandmother. Because after a while, once I moved in my grandmother's house, my grandmother started, you know, we were, we were good. But after a while, my grandmother started making some rules. What do you mean I gotta clean the bathroom? I did that at my mother and father's house. Why do I have to do that here? What do you mean I gotta come in at midnight? I'm 19, I'm 19, 20, what do you, what? What do you mean I can't have three, four, five people over in, in, your, in your living room? What are you talking about? What do you mean I can't drink whatever I wanna drink? Granny, what are you talking about? Grandma started having rules in her house. 
So guess what I wanted to do? Whatever I wanted to do. And guess what granny told me? You got to go. So guess what I did? You got to go. So here's Kim Kendrick, Washington Avenue. I went on down to and got the U-Haul. U-Haul place is still there. I'll never forget that day. I went and got the U-Haul, packed up my little bit of stuff. You know, I got the tiniest U-Haul because that's all you can afford. Back then it was like $14.99 for two hours. And I hurried up for those two hours. <laughs> Me and my uncle, God rest his soul. Me and my uncle packed up whatever little bit of, I had probably about as much as fit on this table. That's all I had to get up from South Philly to Mount Airy. And I never forget, I packed up all the stuff I had from her back room into that little tiny U-Haul. And as I was leaving, I had her keys and I, I, I took off those two keys off of my keychain, and, and she was coming down off of her stoops, the three stoops, and I took off the keys and, and I turned. And, and by that time, she and I had some tension going on, right? Because she was angry because I, I wasn't listening to her rules and I was angry because I wanted to do my thing and I took off those two keys and I was going to give them back to her real quick. And as I turned and give them back her keys and as she turned to look at me, she went like this and said, stop. And she said, you hold on to those keys, Kim. Because you'll need me before I need you. And she ain't never lied. She ain't never lied. You ever have to swallow your pride? Finally, that young son, he came to his senses. He decided to return home. It was his hunger. It was his poverty that brought him home to his senses when he had nothing to eat. How many times have you left the church? And I'm not talking where you wrote a letter to the pastor, where you wrote a letter to church council, where you, how many times in your mind, in your heart, in your pocket, have you left the church? How many times have you left God in your heart, in your mind, in your pocket? Don't raise your hand, just think about it. And I'm not talking pandemic, way before pandemic. When even if a, if a loved one passed and we said, God, why? You lost that job and we said, God, that loved one that, that you thought was going to be your ride or die that you said till death do us part. And now what the, when your child done acted like a fool, like I did so many years ago, when your coworker, your boss, when you, your promotions, when this, how many times have we left a situation believing The youngest son thought that it would last forever, but it didn't. He knew, he knew that there was a place where he could get fed. Do you know that there's a place where you could still be fed? That no matter what, there is still a place where you can be fed. The son knew that if he worked for his father, that at least he would have food, at least he would have a roof over his head. I knew that at least my grandmother would open up her door. However, the son realized that he would have to ask for forgiveness because there's always the price of the ticket. There's always a price of the ticket. There's always an apology to give a meaningful, a meaningful, I'm sorry, a meaningful apology, a meaningful. Asking for forgiveness. 
He also knew that he had to receive something. His father owed him nothing. However, he could work for his father. At least he would have food and a place to live. So his son began the journey home. Imagine that you are that youngest son. Imagine for a minute in your mind that you are that youngest son. What type of anxiety would you have? You've got to go in front of this person. You've got to go and have this meeting. You've got to go and stand in front of, what type of thoughts are going through your mind? How high is your anxiety? What is your greatest fear? And yet, what do you got to lose? What do you have to lose at this point? Your life is in shambles, and if needed, you will accept whatever is given. Your pride has been left behind. As we will know, the father, the father had been looking for the son every single day. Did you hear me? The father had been looking for the son every single day, walking up that road. And up until that day, he was sad, yearning for the son to come home. Day after day, the father waited every single day, waiting every single day for you to come back, every single day for you to have a conversation, every single day for you to just say, God, I'm ready, every single day. God said, listen, you ain't even got to step back into the church. I just want you to say, I'm here. I just want you to open up your heart. I just want you to have a conversation. I just want you to love God and love your neighbor. How many times have we left God, but God has never left us? God has never left us. And finally, the day arrives when the father sees somebody coming down the road. He sees somebody coming down the road because that's what a parent do. Always has the light on, always looking out and sees the child coming down the road. And Luke writes that the father was filled with compassion, perhaps great joy, perhaps happiness. And as soon as he saw his son, he ran and he embraced him. And immediately the prodigal son knew that he was truly forgiven, deeply forgiven, and deeply loved, deeply loved, deeply loved, deeply loved, because love transcends. And today is a good day to place ourselves in the shoes of the prodigal son. Today is a good day as we baptize AJ. Today is a good day to talk about love, to remember love. Today is a good day as we look at whether or not we are prodigal sons, prodigal daughters, prodigal children. Times in our lives when we have all left home, all at some point left God but knowing that God has never left us. God is always on the lookout, yearning, waiting, ever patient. Take a few minutes to thank God. Bask in a few minutes, of, in a few moments of that reality that there's no greater gift, that God will never leave you nor forsake you, will always wrap God's loving arms around you and say, come on, Come on home, come on home, come on home, come on. The doors are always open. The doors are always open. The light is always on. To God be the glory. Always open and the lights are always on. At this time, we proudly, proudly want to baptize the beautiful baby AJ and welcome AJ into
the light of Christ. As we're gathered here today for the baptism of Anthony Joseph Cash the third, and I think he's ready. I think he's ready. People brought their children to Jesus for him to touch them. The disciples turned them away, those disciples. Make sure I got all my stuff together. But Jesus said, let the children come to me. Does everybody have their bulletins? All right. Don't stop them, the children, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you solemnly, anyone who does not welcome the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. And so we welcome you, Anthony, and your water bottle, and all your toys, however you present yourself, AJ, TJ and Stephanie, and the godparents, Francis Cash and Joseph Cash, along with a host of family and beloved friends. We give thanks for you and pray that all will be faithful to the solemn promises made this day all those gathered in person and virtually. Let us together, everyone in the sanctuary and online, let us affirm our trust in God's mercy. Amen. I invite TJ and Stephanie and the godparents, Francis and Joseph, to come forward, please. You see the water? All right. Dad, you're going to hold it? All right, so one of the godparents, if you can hold the towel so that when he is wet, you're going to grab him. All right. TJ and Stephanie, you have brought your child for baptism. Do you confess in one God who is the death and ground of our being, who is the liberating and reconciling Christ? who is the spirit of truth and life, and if so, say we do. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. TJ and Stephanie, do you promise to share with Anthony the good news of the kingdom, to nurture him with your Christian faith, to demonstrate for him a loving response to human need, to show him justice and a will to transform injustice to lead him to love, safeguard the earth and all creation. If so, say we do. God, parents. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. Francis and Joseph, you have been appointed as godparents of Anthony. Will you befriend and support AJ in his life's journey? Will you encourage and counsel him in the search for truth? Will you keep a special place for him in your lives as he builds his own? And if so, please say, we will. Jesus said, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God is like a child, shall never enter it. Francis and Joseph, will you help Anthony in his growing up to care about Joseph, to value peace, to honor reconciliation, and to open his heart to all the possibilities of love? If so, say, we will. All right. Congregation online as well as here in the sanctuary. We as a congregation gathered here this day also have our part to play as Anthony's Christian upbringing. And so I ask you to rise to your feet in spirit and in truth or physically if you can, in body and or in spirit as a sign as your commitment to, and if you can online in body or spirit. And I ask you, as a community of faith, witnessing and celebrating this sacrament, do you promise your love, your support, and your care for Anthony 
and your future with him? If so, say we do. Amen. And do you promise to share with him what you yourselves have received, the gift of God's love revealed in Christ, a desire to grow in the way of Christ and all your life and to serve him in the world? If so, say we do. All right. Are you ready? Let's get this party started. Come on, AJ. Are you ready? Anthony Joseph Cash, you ready for the sprinkling? Oh, you stopped there right there. Are you ready? All right. We want to do a proud sprinkling? Let's do this. I baptize you in the name of God, your creator, Jesus, your heavenly brother, and the Holy Spirit, your advocate. Amen and amen. Together, if we recite our creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, God's only son, Gracious and loving God, we give thanks not only for this water, but we give thanks for AJ. We thank you, God, for the way that you refresh and sustain all of us. Refresh and sustain this family, the godparents, this congregation. We welcome Anthony Joseph Cash III as we baptize him and receive him into the church by baptism. Jesus said, whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. Ladies and gentlemen, we proudly welcome in Anthony Joseph Cash III. Amen and amen. <laughs> amen. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless. Welcome, Anthony. pray for the family. We pray for him as we have our prayers for the people. Amen and amen. What a moment of great joy that we all get to celebrate this morning. And as we do, we begin to call to mind the wonderful ways that the God who never leaves us is indeed with us in this moment, holding us, loving us, always calling us back. We begin this morning with this prayer of gratitude for Anthony Joseph, for blessings on AJ and his whole family. We give gratitude for his life, for the promise before him, for the gift that he will be in this community and that this community will be for him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray too this morning in a very, very special way. We hold our brother Harry in our prayers and Sue. We pray for healing. We pray for your presence. We pray for your loving embrace, oh God. Be with Harry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray too, loving God. We pray each week for the pain and the suffering that is in Ukraine these days. We pray for your spirit of peace, your spirit of healing, to come upon that part of the world and to come upon our hearts as well, that those parts of us that make war that are not about peace can be filled with peace so that our world too can be filled with peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And I invite now people who are um, in the sanctuary right now, if there is a prayer that you'd like to offer aloud, there's a microphone that's going around, and if you could please speak your prayer into the microphone, we can lift those aloud. 
The response, of course, um, is Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And if you are online and would like to offer a prayer aloud, uh, aloud you could unmute and do that, or you could type it in the chat and we can offer it as well. So my friends, I offer you, please, um, for this opportunity to lift up what you would like in prayer at this time. Loving God, I pray for my nieces and nephews and all their cousins as one of them has been put into hospice care this week. He's a young man and he's not going to live much longer. Please keep them all in your care. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. I would like to lift up um, Elaine Spangler and her family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Pray for the Douglas family this morning. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Start, Lita lifts up a prayer for her brother and mom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, I lift up a prayer for all families who've been affected by the rash of violence that we are experiencing as a country, in our cities, in our towns, on our roadways. Lord, help all people see your way and love that we are together united as living beings to show the joy of being your children in this world. Help us to reach out to those who have been wounded and help them heal. Help us find ways to grow together and not apart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I'd like to pray for Harry Farrell as he experiences another setback for Sue and for their family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We continue to lift up the prayer that we have been praying um, as we have our ongoing search for our settled pastor. We pray for our search committee. We pray for all of those who are discerning a call to this uh, pastoral position. We pray for wisdom and guidance, O oh God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you know the prayers that we hold deep in our hearts. You hear the prayers that we pray out loud. And you know the prayers that we don't even know to express out loud at this time. So we lift up all of these prayers together with your people all over the world as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Loving God, who art in heaven, blessed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen.
Amen and amen. And many thanks again to our wonderful bell choir. And thanks so much for the gifts that you bring to us. And it is so many ways that we can share our offerings um, that we celebrate and we can offer our time and our talents and our treasure in so many ways to continue to build up the community of God. And we want to just remind you that if you're in the sanctuary this morning, there's a basket in the back if you'd like to leave an offering on your way out. Um, and of course, you can always give online at www.glensideucc.org or by mail at Glenside United Church of Christ, 2160 Wharton Road, Glenside, PA 19038. And I want to continue to remind you, it's the many ways that you share yourselves, whether it's financially or with your time or with your prayer or the many talents that you have, that, that that continues to support the ministry and the work of this church. And for that, we are always so grateful. So thank you for all of your support. And we encourage everyone to continue to find those ways to stay connected with Glenside United Church of Christ. Uh, visit our website at www.glensideucc.org. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram email us at admin at glensideucc.org or give us a call at 215-887-1819. And I just want to thank everybody. Um, I'm at a conference this weekend, so I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be with all of you via Zoom today. Um, it's just been good to be with you this way and to celebrate with you from a distance. Thank you. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Antares. I want to say thank you also to Jason, our digital hospitality host. Thank you so much. Thank you to Jill for serving on our tech team. Thank you for all of our tech team. Thank you for our hospitality team, our phenomenal, phenomenal praise ensemble, all of our music ministry. Thank you for each and every one of you for being here. Our phenomenal bells. Yes. Um, and each and every one of you for joining us today. Um, remember, the light is always on and you can always come home. Amen and amen. So as you leave this place, may you be awestruck by the beauty of this world. May you laugh and may it be contagious. May you overflow with love for those around you. May you be gushing with hope and quick to point out joy. And in all your living and breathing and being, may you find yourself full to the brim with God's Holy Spirit and may it change your life. In the name of the lover, the beloved, the love itself, go in peace. Full to the brim. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth, that would bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself. It's not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. And I'm coming back to the heart of worship because it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing that made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. In the 
better than this words No one could express how much you deserve Well, I'm weak and poor All I have is yours Every single breath I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself It's not what you have required You have so much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship Cause it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm coming back to the heart of worship Cause it's all about you it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. saying over and over that uh, Greenside is just a plethora of talents. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Bobby, for sharing your gifts and talents. Amen. I'm sorry that uh, between headsets and glasses and masks, there's a lot going on. Amen and amen. Uh, announcements. Um, we know that we still have um, our mission moment is the and I have no glasses on, is uh, the No More Secrets Project. And so I know that we um, have a mountain of uh, supplies uh, in the back of the sanctuary and Glenside um, has a heart of gold that we have continued to have donations pouring in here in the sanctuary throughout the month of March. We are continuing to uh, collect hygiene products, um, menstrual supplies to put an end to period poverty. So thank you, thank you, and thank you so much. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Don't forget, you need a microphone before you make an announcement. There's a microphone right in front of you, Ms. Lar. Good morning. I have a few more of our uh, fourth week of Lent um, activity for this week. So kids, come see me before you leave. I have a goodie for you, okay? Thank you. Amen. Are there any more announcements? I'm looking over at uh, Miss Judy, because I'm like, whoa, Miss Judy, you don't have an announcement? <laughs> Are there any announcements? I believe there's not an announcement on the next slide, Jason. There's not 15 minutes of announcements? I'm not going to get an email about 15 minutes of announcements. Everyone enjoy your Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your week. Go with God's love. Go with God's grace. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, AJ. Thank you so much, Cash family, for being here. Thank you, everyone, for being here. God bless you. God loves you. Thank you, Pastor Anne Therese. Have a great day.